We are gathered here at St. Thomas, uh, here in this octave of Easter. So we celebrate the Feast of Easter. It's so important that we celebrate it for an entire week. So for this entire week, we continue the Easter joy as of Easter Sunday. Uh, we have with us the um, blessed candle, the Easter candle that's been blessed, and we see some of the decorations in the church, simple, but nonetheless a reminder that Lent has passed. We see Easter lilies. We are reminded of Easter joy. And in this day, it's good for us to remember the cause of that joy, and that is the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, when we think about the resurrection, it really has the power to change everything. And we can think about the disciples and what their perspective was like. Um, put yourself back in their point, from their point of view before the resurrection, and they would have been filled with fear and dread. Uh, they thought that Jesus' death was the end. Uh, I'm sure there were many things about Jesus they didn't understand. They were sorrowful. Uh, they uh, recognized all of those who wanted to persecute Jesus. It seemed insurmountable. Um, even the disciples that were ready to die with Jesus, um, of course, they fled. They weren't strong enough even to stay with him even to the end. Um, and perhaps if Jesus was going to meet his end, uh, at the very least, they would say, well, at least we could go die with him. And if that's the end, then at least we could be true up to the very end. But what we see instead, um, the disciples, they're not strong enough. Jesus knew that probably better than anybody. Um, but what we see is not the end, but really a beginning. And the resurrection does that. So instead of the disciples thinking that all is lost, instead their loss turns into great gain. Um, suddenly the past is now completely changed. Their perspective is changed. That once they realize Jesus is risen from the dead, once they come to believe, then they look differently on Jesus, on everything he did from the Last Supper to the cross to the resurrection. They look differently at the last three years of Jesus' teaching and miracles and preaching. Uh, they look differently at the all of Scripture and the Old Testament. Uh, reading passages that point to Jesus and suddenly seeing fresh perspective um, in some of those Old Testament stories, uh, seeing fresh perspective in, in what Jesus did, and now suddenly they understand. It becomes much clearer to them. Um, and so it's that perspective of hope and joy that I, I think we should hold on to at this time. Uh, the disciples come to believe, and that belief itself becomes infectious. And perhaps that's not a good word to use right now, but I use it nonetheless. So, in fact, the faith itself becomes contagious and infectious. Um, that once they have come to believe, then they spread that belief. They share that belief and that faith with others, and then it inspires them. So that way they too might come to believe and then have strength in the power of the resurrection. And we know that that happened in the first uh, days and the first years um, following Jesus' death and resurrection, that the disciples themselves, in fact, spread that faith, and so it took off. Um, this is one of those things where when we talk about something infectious, uh, this is where the infection itself is the cure. That to come to believe that once our perspective has changed, once we believe in Jesus Christ, then everything changes for us as well. And it's good for us to keep that perspective, that we're not worried merely about the body, but that we are also concerned about the soul. Um, that we're worried about the, the practice of our faith, and we want to live our faith and, and do so even in these times. Um, so I encourage us all to have that perspective of faith and to recognize that that gift of faith is the most important thing that we can give. And in fact, the way that we live our faith can also be an inspiration to others. So during this Easter season, um, sometimes it's good to call upon the Blessed Mother using the prayers of the Regina Chaley, um, using that special Easter prayer. So Queen of Heaven, rejoice. Alleluia. For he whom you privil were privileged to bear, alleluia, has risen as he said, alleluia. Pray to God for us, alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary, alleluia, for the Lord has truly risen, alleluia. O God, who by the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, has been blessed to give joy to the whole world, grant we beseech you that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, his mother, we may attain the joys of eternal life, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God watch over each and every one of you at this time, and may the Lord fill you with his blessings.